congratulate you on your score for GRE at Liberty 2022. So how does it feel? It feels quite amazing. Uh, but yeah, slowly, slowly the score is, you know, uh, reducing its impact on me and now, you know, the university, which university degrees I should apply, uh, what to do next, that is dawning on me. But yeah, you know, the euphoria of, you know, getting that score, coming out of the center and not believing. In fact, for a long while I didn't believe. I was waiting for, you know, my score report to come, you know, to just, you know, actually have tangible proof. That's that 170, 170 and the 160, 160. So, yeah, it feels good. So what is your plan next? What are you, where are you heading to? Which university are you, is your, in your dream? Like an MIT, a Stanford? Oh definitely, uh, all of them, the ones you mentioned, MIT, Stanford, uh, and they are currently looking for, you know, a Masters in Data Science at uh, Carnegie Mellon. And uh, of course, a few safe universities, moderate universities, but yes, the dream is and has always been MIT. So tell me something, how did the Princeton Review material actually help you? What the faculty interactions that you had as a part of your training, how did that help you? So just throw some light on that. Okay, uh, like material wise, in the way I feel the course is like uh, really well structured because it has a nice online offline model to it. Uh, because you know, we as BTEC students, we are always all over the place, we have exams, interns, things like that. So I had my coaching on weekends, which was like a huge plus for me because it made it possible for me to you know, actually probably concentrate in class instead of just going from one class to the other after travelling for 30 kilometers or something like that. So that was one really nice, you know, point of, you know, the, uh, the fact that I could schedule my particular class. Also, if I missed a class, I could ask for another class and things like that happened. Uh, so, you know, that enabled me to do whatever extra co-curricular things I do, like TEDx and things like that. Uh, and obviously, one very big thing, me and my math sir, Shaman sir, we used to do this is he used to ask us to do drills on the platform paper. Uh, so what I used to do is, uh, and like his method, methodology is like, you know, if you're doing it when you wake up, and if you're doing it just before you sleep, uh, you know, your brain is just jogging into, you know, the optimum state. And if you're doing it at that time, and if you're performing well, you surely perform well, you know, at the, at the main good, good times. So what I used to do is, like I used to do a drill every morning as soon as I got up and uh, every night as soon as I went and I used to, you know, give these scores, WhatsApp them to my sir, Shaman sir and he uh, used to provide me instant feedback. The days when it didn't go well, uh, of course he used to engage me, you know, you know, to say it's just a phase and things like that. So that is one thing which happened. Also I feel the way, you know, the way like Shaman sir started his classes uh, telling us about the Indian diaspora and you know like how it's not just uh, you know us going there for our own needs but you know we, when we go there we represent India as a whole yes. so I feel that you know gave me another sense of motivation other than other than of course my personal ambition person goals I feel the way you know the way you try to bring in that sort of a, you know national love uh, feeling in me that I feel really helped you know at times at times when you you know there are times uh, when you don't feel as good so you know I was thinking that but I'm going there and I'm going to represent my country. So I should definitely work hard for it and go my go into my MS in a great university. Other than that, I've written, we have like eight tests on the portal and uh, like an innumerable amount of drills. Like it almost never end. <laughs> so that's that and of course like, uh, and like one particular thing I really like about Manya is the way that they adjust to a student's timetable. Uh, like, like, I, if I give you an instance, uh, I felt I was weak in hour, about two three weeks uh, before the exam. And for that, I requested uh, my verbal man, Bajul man, to you know, help me out. So she very sweetly took out the time, uh, asked me to come at a particular time, and then we were there, and we discussed hour and things like that. She gave me great feedback as to, you know, to use linking words, uh, to maintain a flow more short and bigger sentences. So I feel, you know, the fact that people are willing to give you that extra help, if you if you're going to score better and if you're performing better than the class you are in, they're willing to help you go all the way. Like I'm sure, you know, me getting, I got a 304 uh, in my first diagnostic which happened in Princeton and now that's a 332. So I'm sure, you know. You've seen a lot of a huge yeah. change in your, a lot of improvement that you have seen. Yes, very much so. And I feel like they've been there every step of the day. Like I remember mailing my score reports to my teachers and you know, get, getting feedback from them. Uh, and you know, particularly, and especially like I, I would say, but this is this is a personal opinion. I 
actually math was the easier part because math we have as in we have stronger <laughs> math <laughs> basics so you know it was just about maintaining that concentration for that this uh, you know the amount of time because it's a four hour test you know the brain is tired when verbal it's like a long one so you know it's really helpful you know when uh, it's really really helpful when you know like you know the principal really teaches you these techniques uh, like you know jre uh, is a standardized test so you know it's not only passive do it's me taking it today then my friend taking it a month after so of course for them to make it standardized uh, principal tells you this principal you tells you this that you know they have to maintain a sort of a structure a sort of a format and once you get a hang of it by practicing some questions and you know like my verbal faculty batun ma'am she really was very patient with me <laughs> because she and she like she explained instead of the answer for the rc and you know as to how to eliminate it uh, so you know process of elimination also like uh, they also realize that you know it's a four hour test so i remember my uh, you know i remember sir and ma'am telling me that you know when you tire you know these are the techniques you can use other than that okay when you on it during the first half it's easier because you are focusing on exam but other than that like really interesting techniques as to how to work with the answers like the fact if they give you answers in an ascending order okay that's one sort of format which can be attacked with one sort of a technique okay and uh, like extreme words in rc you know like this is the best this is the worst like uh, they told me like uh, like yeah, like ets is a world renowned organization so they cannot be partial or they cannot have one stand so they told me things like that and like in rc is how paraphrasing things are the actual answers and so you know using the same words from the passage so it's been pretty helpful So, like, what would you give uh, tips or what advice would you give to students who are going to be writing the GRE? What is your, what would you want to share your thoughts with them? First of all, I feel, uh, you know, we as students, we Indians are very hardworking. Okay. Uh, because we have been through, you know, hellish exams in eleventh and twelfth, and we have been through a lot of math. All streams are like now, like a lot of them have math. Uh, so, I feel math we should definitely aim to score a one sixty or one seventy. And I feel math is more of a mind game. Then actual skills because a lot of these skills you have learned in your eighth, ninth, and class, eleventh, and twelfth class. But you know, managing yourself and not letting you know yourself make stupid mistakes, and managing your time. Like what I personally used to, I what I personally did was uh, like we get thirty-five uh, minutes for a twenty-question math section in GRE. So I used to finish doing the whole section in twenty minutes and then do a fifteen-minute review of the section. So you know that's where you know. Uh, that's why that's how I made it to the one seventy one seventy mark. So it's all about time management as well. Yes, very that's much. Okay, so that's the reason. And and the questions, like the questions are tricky. Okay. Uh, like uh, if I could give you an example for uh, you know some sort of a, a model of a question, uh, like they'll ask you, uh, they'll ask you probability of something, and then they'll reverse it right at the last minute. So you are you find out the probability of that something, and you mark accordingly. Yeah. But you forget that there is a reversal in the last. Okay. So that I feel in the math, in math, it is just these small small things, uh, particularly in maintaining your concentration okay. for the whole section. Doing it twice, I highly recommend uh, doing it twice. And for verbal, now for verbal, I I suggest to prepare extensively. Uh, I thankfully, uh, I thankfully have uh, come from a school called Dhanjiri Devshala. And we were we had an ICSE syllabus, so I had a lot of uh, you know background reading. I read a lot of novels and things like that. What I suggest you do is start reading a lot of non-fiction uh, because that really helps for the ICSE. Uh, like the really interesting books if you're interested in psychology, linguistics. Uh, like I I like reading those kinds of books. So what that helps you do is you know it helps you you know make sense of complex ideas. Like this is A, this is B. But A is dependent on B in this way, but and B is dependent on A in this way, and that also has to make sense. And then you have to use that particular causality in your answers, because answers are a little complex that way. And one of the most dreaded things ever is the vocab prep. Uh, the vocab prep, uh, first things first, I definitely practice the flashcards uh, that Princeton gave me, and then after that, I kept scaling up. Like our supplementary, the supplementary manual that Princeton has given me. Other than uh, other than like they give us a set of four books, uh, which is the official guide, uh, uh, um, a manual which they use in class for you know drills and things like that. Like I remember Shaman sir putting up a counter 
you know, countdown in front of the whole class. And then all of us doing drills in our manuals and things like that. And then supplementary to you know, doing giving more homework drills and things like that. So what uh, I feel that helped me in a really big way. You know, doing those supplementary drills. There is, uh, there are like these lists of, uh, you know, what do you call them? Uh, you know, from where the words start, word rules. Like hydrogen, hydro, water, and then producing. So, you know, there are lists of word rules in the supplementary and uh, there are like words of various levels you start with easy, medium, hard. And usually my verbal faculty did, did that with us in class and gave us a homework with that. So that really helped me, you know, getting my vocabulary there. Well. And also the fact that this happened over the course of three months really helped. Instead so of just dumping information on me once. Yeah. Like people usually do that, you know, they do the normal 333 list yeah. and things like that. Uh, but I feel, yeah, going slowly, uh, taking tiny bits of information and advice, uh, doing, doing your homework after these classes and taking them seriously because I feel, you know, most people come just for the sake of it. So I feel, take it seriously because you're paying, a, you're paying quite an amount for these classes as well as, you know, they're giving you quite a lot of homework and a lot of guidance. So it depends on you, you know, how you make use of that. So I feel that uh, as a responsibility should come out and other than that, uh, other than that, I feel you should reward yourself. Uh, you know, it's very important to have that work-life balance. And so, you know, catch up a, you know, a movie, a TV series or a movie series. Like, I, I was watching Game of Thrones while I was preparing for the last one month of 